6.000 años antes de Cristo, de forma accidental, nacía una bebida que cambiaría el rumbo de la historia. Olvier TV, el programa cervecero. Bienvenidos a Olvier TV, el programa para los amantes de la cerveza y para aquellos que a partir de hoy la van a amar. En el 2022, durante la World Beer Cup y la Craft Beer Conference, estuvimos charlando con Julia Hertz, presidente de la AJA. Nos encontramos con Julia Hertz. Ella ahora es la directora de la AJA, de la Asociación de Cerveceros Caseros de los Estados Unidos y realmente es una alegría enorme que una persona con un currículum tan grande esté a cargo ahora de esta asociación. Hi Julia. Hello, hello and hello to everyone that's watching. Congrats for your new job yes. because you say relation uh, with the, the beer 20 years. I've been in beer since my 20s and started as a home brewer, so my new role here as new executive director of the American Home Brewers Association is especially rewarding and it feels full circle to come back home and still be in beer, but now advocating for as many people as possible to find and enjoy the hobby of home brewing beer. What do you plan with your team to now and own. Yes, so um, you know we have hundreds of homebrew clubs globally, 2,000 plus that we are aware of in the United States, 1 million point one people in the U.S. estimated homebrew, and globally I don't even know the number. So the plans are to take the resources that we have through the benefits of being an AHA member and give you reasons to brew, help you as a home brewer reach your goals, give you more recipes, give you more innovative ideas, make it easy to home brew or help you get as advanced and geeky as you want to get. Continue with the Symergy. Obviously, no. Yes, Zymergy magazine has been published since 1978. Incredible publication, and it's how I started homebrewing, frankly. Um, so we still publish that today. If you're an AHA member, you get that every other month. And then um, homebrewersassociation.org, O-R-G, is our website. And those are the two anchor points for all of the information that we publish. We also, this year, have uh, the National Homebrew Competition, which will be several thousand beers judged in Pittsburgh. Um, and we have HomebrewCon, which gathers homebrewers together in Pittsburgh for their national competition June 23rd to 25th. Other things, homebrew holidays, we have Big Brew coming up. Yes, big, big seven, seven yes, May. You are so on it, and I know this audience gets it, the importance of um, you know supporting small and independent craft brewers, and you homebrewing at your home, you are a homebrewer that's independent. And so brew on May 7th with us. Um, we also have Mead Day in early August, then we have um, Learn to Homebrew Day in November. So we've got a lot of reasons to help you brew and to help you learn how to do it in an even more fulfilling way way. Thank you for your job. Thank you for your work. Thank you. For your passion and professional and to help the guys. We start with, I suppose, the most important things to the craft the home brewer. Yes, yes. Brewing at home is how many professional brewers have started and if you're a home brewer it's not all about having to go pro, it's about tweaking and refining and, and brewing and it's fermenting. You don't even just have to brew beer. We publish recipes on cheese making, how to make kombucha, right? Seltzer's hot. We have all sorts of resources and so yeah, it's very nurturing and when you do do it and you get it, like my, my hostess here, <laughs> Um, you know, you, uh, you have a much more, I think, enriched day-to-day -day home life. There's nothing more special to me in the home than having good music, good food, good company, and something fermenting over in, uh. that you can see and smell <laughs> and touch and watch it develop. And then you package it into a bottle or a keg, and then you serve that up, and you get feedback, and you enjoy it. And sensory reward-wise, it is just off the charts amazing to homebrew. Thank you, Julia. Thank you back. Be well, everybody, and uh, happy homebrewing to you. Gracias, Julia, por esta entrevista. Salud.
Molinos BZ, el punto justo de la molienda para la elaboración de cerveza. en la luz y lomas envío sin cargo a todo zona sur y capital federal más de 200 etiquetas para todos los gustos Hopsteiner, fundada en 1845, líder mundial en la industria del lúpulo. Calidad, sostenibilidad e innovación de nuevas variedades y productos de lúpulo. Hopsteiner, líder mundial en la industria del lúpulo. Birra Mazarte, Desarmadero Bar, en la esquina de Gorriti y La Valleja. Fermentis, easy to use, fácil de usar. Inocula directamente o rehidrata con mayor flexibilidad. Fácil, limpio y sustentable. Más información, fermentis.com No es el tres pico, parate en punta de pie. Lúpulos Andinos, organizadores del Congreso de Lúpulo. Gorila, cervecería argentina. La evolución de la involución. Firestone Walker en los Estados Unidos, parte 3. Eric, this is the moment. Yes, it is. It's the, our favorite moment. Now we get a taste. Okay. Yes. Explain me. So the four beers we're going to be tasting today is kind of um, an array, a, a mix of what we do here at Firestone Walker. I love agave spirits. I drink lots of tequilas and mezcals. So I always try to have a beer that I age in tequila. And I try to bring in some of the best extra añejo tequila uh, being that it's going to age at least six to eight years in barrels usually ex-bourbon barrels, so I bring some barrels in and I drink a lot of cocktails at home. My wife and I love cocktails, so a lot of my inspiration when I make a lot of my beers is based off a of cocktail. It's tequila, it's orange juice, and it's grenadine. I designed a beer, aged it in the extra Añejo tequila barrels for about 18 months, really in part of that beautiful, herbaceous, um, minerality, kind of fruit characters of the tequila into the beer. And then I also aged some beers in some ex-bitter barrels. We have a distillery in Kentucky that uses ex-bourbon barrels to make bitters. And they, I get orange bitter barrels from them. So I ate some of the beer in the orange bitter barrels to, kind of, to mimic the orange juice used in the cocktail. So it's really a true inspiration to the cocktail, but 100% beer. First thing, you, I mean, visually, you always kind of want to look, as you know. Um, it's nice to see the clarity, the slight pinkish hue from the hibiscus to mimic the sunrise for the cocktail itself. It still has a nice uh, retainable head on it, and then those aromatics are just popping out. A good mouthfeel, a good texture, kind of coats the tongue, 
and just the, the flavors are just bouncing all over the tongue. The next one, mezcal. I love mezcal, I love smoky spirits. Uh -huh. So what I did here, again, based off a cocktail, one of my favorite, I have a lot of favorite cocktails, <laughs> yeah. you're gonna learn. I, I know, I know. <laughs> is a, it's called a mezcalita. It's, it's mezcal, it's a fresh orange juice, fresh lime juice, a little bit of agave syrup to add a little bit of sweetness to kind of play with the smokiness of whatever mezcal you're using. And then you always rim your glass with tahin. Tahin is a mixture of dried chili peppers ground up and sea salt. Phenomenal. So I brewed a beer. I actually used a good amount of corn in there, um, aged it in the mezcal barrels, some orange bitter barrels and some fresh lime juice. And then I, we, ate, we used agave syrup to make this beer. And that's kind of that beer there. And you kind of get the color as well. I mean, the, the base beer, the malts we used, uh, uh, the yeah. caramel yeah. malts, but yeah. we also used a lot of agave syrup. And that agave looks like really dark, robust maple syrup. And that's kind of what the beer looks yeah. like. Like, it's a little more red. Yeah, so different. The smell is so... Very good observant. You get them all and you get that slight like soil character, that slight like peatiness, like smoke note. A little and more underlying. sweet. A more little, little more sweet from the agave syrup. And you get a slight, a slight lingering saltiness, salinity and spice from, yeah, the, yeah. from the chili pepper and sea salt. And then the orange. Wow. And again, a hint of acidity from the limes. And we, we hands, we juiced our own limes and use it and use the uh, the lime peel to and to uh, and influence the aromatics. Yes. So there, it's, there's a lot going on in here, and this is a really fun beer to drink because as it warms up, a lot of beers you want to drink really cold are these barrel aged beers that we make here. You want to start them off at room temperature. And as they warm up, that's why you notice a lot of our glasses, you palm it. Because as you, these are all meant to be sipped beers. They're anywhere from 10 to 16% alcohol. So they're meant to be sipped. You could do food pairings with them. But as they warm up, you're always going to get a different flavor and aroma. So. More warm, more flavors, and more aroma. Mm -hmm. It's that exactly. simple. I like. This is so complex, compleja, but it's so easy to drink. I, oh, I agree. I always love opening up this beer because I know I'm going to take my time with it. And it just takes me back to so many memories drinking the cocktail because it mimics the cocktail a lot. And it always gives me the goosebumps. Next, we move on to Royal Street. This one's pretty unique. I brought in some beautiful 500 liter cognac barrels, aged beer using um, about 49% of local white grape juice. So that's gonna be a very unique beer. So, oh, there are a lot of spices here. Yeah. Oh my the aroma. Beer, beer, beer. Oh, this, uh, I love this beer as well. I, I love every beer I make, no, no, yeah, but, but this is one of my favorite oh, beers. My God. So this is our Royal Street. So this is based off a Sazerac cocktail, kind of um, created in New Orleans. So it was a cognac based cocktail with absinthe. Absinthe has that star anise wormwood characteristic, that black licorice and then um, aromatic bitters and then in it, eventually they started using rye whiskey in the blend as well so this is a blend of a base beer aged in cognac rye whiskey and absinthe barrels the cocktail is usually always rimmed with the lemon so i so i added yeah. I, I i i taste a little the lemon li yeah so we have a lot of a lot of um, citrus orchards around here too so we have some friends that get us a bunch of lemons and there's a little bit of a lemon, fresh lemon juice in there. And then we got double barrel Parabola. Parabola is what we're most known for. We've been making this beer one for one of the longest amount of times. It's our big, thick, viscous imperial stout, traditionally aged in bourbon barrels. The one we're drinking today is our double barrel Parabola. So it spent one year in, Parabola, in bourbon barrels. We took that liquid out of those bourbon, put that same liquid directly into a fresh batch of newly dumped bourbon. So it spent overall two years in barrel and came out about 16% alcohol. This 
is the the end of that, the of the night. That is this is the end is of it. Yeah. Not north. You want your dessert? You want a cigar? Yeah. By the fire. In the coach. It's exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, exactly. It's in the coach. Oh. I mean, yeah. This is oh. this is what we're. I mean, this is a big imperial stout. Yes. Aged in some of the best bourbon barrels that we can acquire. And like I said, most of the beers are on average about a year in barrel of the same barrel. This one is two years in total and two different sets. Easy drinking for 60%. You get the, you get your vanilla, toasted coconut, you get a lot of fudge like uh, chocolate. Yes. Roasted coffee or traditional, but everything's like on such a smooth level. Nothing's harsh or astringent. So salute. Gracias, Eric. De Thank nada. you so much. De nada. My pleasure. Pleasure having having you here today. Increíble cata que pudimos compartir en Firestone Walker. Salud. Heller, bar de fábrica, la perfecta combinación entre todos nuestros estilos de cervezas artesanales junto a la mejor gastronomía. Heller, en Mar del Plata. Cada lugar y cada momento tienen un estilo distinto. Cada espacio se transforma con un sonido. ¿Y vos? ¿Sos capitán de tu vida? Surprise, motherfucker. De lunes a lunes, toma la exquisita cerveza artesanal Antares en La Plata, 56, diagonal y parador. Choperas Cabo de Frío, la solución en fabricación e instalación de choperas. Frío Beer, chillers y torpedos, micro y macro cervecerías, asesoramiento profesional, instalación, www.friobier.com.ar Amsterdam, Friends Factory, La Plata, el lugar en tu mundo. Sudamericana de Filtrado Sociedad Anónima. Alta calidad, máxima eficiencia y rendimiento. Más de 50 años en la industria del filtrado. Guten Beer, producimos nuestra cerveza. Podés encontrarla en nuestros bares de Lomas y Cañuelas. Guten Beer, grandes birras, grandes bares. Cervecería Artesanal Coleman. Desde hace 8 años, elaborando un producto artesanal genuino. Coleman. Construyendo cerveza. Llega a nuestras birras. Bueno, estamos en la sección Nuestras birras de Olvier TV y vamos a probar eh, nuestra sour de línea con maracuyá, guayaba y lima. Eh, bueno, es una Berliner Weiss como estilo de base a la cual le hacemos adición de maracuyá, guayaba y lima en frío. Bueno, esta está, está muy fresca, la acabamos de embarrilar hace muy poquito, así que está la fruta explotada, eh, se siente todo, 
maracuyá, guayaba y lima. Cuando pasa el tiempo y baja un poco la intensidad de las frutas, eh, se nota un poquito la maltosidad, digamos. Tiene un poquitito como algo media masa madre, típico de las Brenner Weiss. Eh, en este momento no, porque está súper fresca y está explotadísima en, en frutas. Bueno, tiene, a ver, tiene, tiene muy poquito alcohol, 4 grados, es una, una cerveza para tomar un día de calor, te puede tomar 10.000, es eh, súper fresca. Eh, la apariencia es bien bastante pálida, eh, un poco de turbidez por el agrado de la fruta, tiene un poquitito de retención de espuma, que bueno, en estas birras es un poco difícil lograrla. Nada, un final súper limpio, un retrogusto frutal, amargor muy bajo, nada, cero, lúpulo tampoco. Eh, bueno, un detalle no menor es la cerveza más ganadora de jabalina. Eh, tiene tres medallas de oro y dos de bronce. Tiene medalla de oro en Copa Argentina, medalla de oro en Aro Rojo, medalla de oro en tres ciudades, además de Best of Show, y bronce en mitad del mundo y en Tairón. Bueno, para poder comprar esta cerveza pueden entrar a nuestro Instagram. Ahí en todos los posteos está el listado de, de los bottle shops, bares, donde vendemos nuestras cervezas. Y si no, nos escriben y les contestamos. Bueno, estamos en la sección Nuestras Birras de Olvier TV. Hoy les vamos a presentar la Fake News. Es una doble IPA, eh, edición especial. Bueno, el aroma tiene... Nada, resina primero, resina típica de más de la costa oeste de Estados Unidos y seguido mucha fruta, mucha fruta de mucha fruta de carozo, yo siento durazno, hay un melón por ahí dando vueltas, hay, hay varias cosas, un poquitito más atrás, algo tropical, algún maracuyá, este, nada, así que promete. Bueno, en boca repite un poco lo mismo, tiene un amargor intenso, también típico de una West Coast, eh, pero limpio, limpio. Y bueno, tenemos resina por un lado y, y repite lo mismo, fruta, durazno, tiene melón, tiene maracuyá. La verdad, tiene un final bastante limpio, eh, se le siente un poquitito el alcohol, esta es una birra de 8 y medio de alcohol. Y una turbidez típica de, nada, de, de dry hop, digamos, de las birras muy lupuladas. Este, una espuma no tan densa, pero se queda. Acá usamos Columbus, usamos Centennial, eso en caliente. Después hicimos un hop stand bastante largo con Simcoe y Sultana. Y después hicimos tres dry hops a distintas temperaturas de Galaxy, Sultana y Simcoe. La fermentamos con una levadura Lager, con la W3470, pero a temperatura de ale. Eh, nada, nos gusta la limpieza que, que, otorga, que otorga esa levadura, la tomabilidad. Eh, pero bueno, a esa temperatura nosotros sentimos que da menos sulfuro, trabaja más rápido, lo cual siempre viene bien. Así que bueno, y esta cerveza, si la quieren conseguir, lo puede, puede entrar a nuestro Instagram. Eh, ahí nosotros en todos los posteos ponemos el listado de los bares y los bottle shops donde pueden comprarla y si no nos escriben y les contestamos dónde.